Praise the Lord everybody. This is your friend and brother Ved Nukai. Welcome to Words of Encouragement. We have been talking about laying the foundation. We have been dealing for the past weeks and months on laying a foundation and today we continue. So we have been talking about the Word of God, the authority of God's Word. And this evening and for the next few weeks, we are going to talk about the effects of the Word of God. The Apostle Paul told the church at Thessal Thessalonica or the Thessalonians that the Word of God will work effectively in you. So what are the effects of the Word of God upon your life upon my life we are looking at one of those effects and it is this the word of god will produce faith that's right the word of god will produce faith but why do we need faith in the first place well hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 tells us but without faith it is impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him why do we need faith this verse tells us it is impossible to please God without faith therefore God demands faith if we're going to come to God, we must believe. We must have faith in Him. Hallelujah. We must believe that He will do what, <coughs> sorry, what He says He will do and what His Word says He will do. We must have faith in order to get saved. If you are a Christian person, you will know that. If you are non-Christian and you don't understand the word saved, is to be rescued, rescued from your condition, rescued from, the, from hell's fire, rescued from damnation. Amen. In order to be saved, we have to be, we, have, we first have to have faith to believe. Faith to believe in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith to believe that God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. We must have faith to, to get saved. We must have faith to to, to be healed. If we are to receive anything from God at all, we must have faith. At the, the, the end of it, the bottom line is, my dear friend, that faith is everything. Amen. So why do we need faith? God demands faith. We must have faith. And Jesus says, if you have faith as much as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, remove and go yonder and it will, and it will move. Amen. So it's all about faith. Amen. So how do we get this faith? Amen. Well, good question. Glad you asked it and I'm happy to tell you that Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 tells us how to get faith. Amen. What it says is that so then faith comes. That's right. It comes. Amen. So then faith comes. And that is important for us to understand. Faith will come to you. If you don't have faith, you know, you could get it. You could get it, my dear friend. It will come to you. And God wants you to have it. And how does he say you will have it? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the word of God produces faith. Did you get that? I'm sure you did. Amen. Amen. Very well. Hallelujah. So, if you don't have faith, 
God don't want you to stay with tout feet. God doesn't want you to remain in, in a faithless kind of situation. He wants you to have it. Now, he says it comes. Eh? And notice, notice I repeat, how it comes by hearing the word of God. You don't, you know, you don't even have to pray for faith. Praying, this scripture doesn't tell us that faith comes by praying. Or faith comes by giving. And I know that some people might be offended by that, but faith doesn't even come by giving. Faith doesn't come by wishful thinking, oh, I wish I had faith like so and brother, so and so, sister, so and so. Oh, I wish I had faith to believe this or believe that. Amen. You could have the faith, but how you will get it? By hearing the word of of God. Hallelujah. That is what the scripture says. So, so then, faith comes but comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Not hearing what all kinds of people are, are, are putting out there. It is not hearing the philosophy of men. It is not about hearing, amen, all of the the wisdom uh, and the uh, uh, and all of the oration uh, or narration of other uh, of people it is hearing what the word of god say and you will remember that we said earlier in this uh, in our study in our studies if i could refer to these broadcasts as um i'd said to you that how you treat the word of God is important. You cannot treat the word of God as the word of man. You have to treat the word of God. I have to treat the word of God too as the word of God and as God is speaking to me. Amen. In our church, we make a declaration, we make a proclamation before um, our main service that this is my Bible, this is the Word of God, this is God speaking to me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And now faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So, that is how you will get faith. And, and that is one of the effects of, of the word of God. It produces faith. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Cornelius sent for Peter to come and to preach the word of God. And when Cornelius and his family heard the word of God, when they heard, faith came up in them. Faith arose. Faith became alive. They heard and they were saved. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So it is important. Now, how that relates to you and I? Well, maybe I could use a New Testament um, example. When we read the Word of God, it might not be a bad idea to read it aloud so we can hear, hear it. I believe that in the New Testament, that when New Testament times at least, that when they read the Word of God, they read it aloud. Do you have scripture and verse for that? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Scripture. And I think that you got it in the book of Acts, it tells us that the Ethiopian eunuch, the minister of finance of Ethiopia, ha having visited Jerusalem to, 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 to participate in the Passover feast, was returning to his home, he is sitting in the chariot, and he read the book, the Bible, he read the Bible book of Isaiah and he read it aloud. That is how Philip heard him reading from the book of Isaiah and he asked him, do you understand what you're reading, Breads? Do you understand, Mr. Finance Minister, what you're reading? Because he was reading aloud. Hallelujah. And I believe that there is something about Hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. When you read it, when you read it, read it 
aloud, my dear friend. Read it so that your hearing, it can get into your hearing, so faith could come alive. Read it, and as you read it, you're proclaiming it in your life, over your life, and in your situation. Hallelujah. Faith will come alive. Amen. Because the Word of God is designed to be like that. Hallelujah. To punch faith inside of you. Hallelujah. So that the unbeliever could become a, a believer. Amen. And hear what the songwriter says, that faith in God can move a mighty mountain. Faith can calm it, the troubled sea. Faith can move, can bring a desert like a fountain. And faith can bring the victory. So have faith in God. Amen. And the word of God will help to produce that faith in you. So read the word of God. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to share with my precious brothers and sisters that have allowed me to come into their homes and certainly into their lives via this medium. Lord God, I pray for them and myself, for the church and for my household, that Lord, we will give ourselves to reading the word of God so that the word will come alive in us. It will cause faith to arise. It will punch faith where there is doubt. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And that by, by reading the word, we will believe you, God, for your word tell us without faith it is impossible to please you. Amen. But you tell us how we can get faith, that if we don't have it, how we could get it. Amen. You say it comes. How it will come? By reading the word of God. So thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us your word. And let may we, O oh God, respect it. May we treat it with the respect that it deserves. Let us not just, oh Lord, rest it on the bookshelf, or on the nightstand, or on some ledge, and leave it there. Because it can be of no use to us until we read it. And so faith will come alive. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Dear friends, that brings the, this broadcast to a close. Thank you very much for allowing me to come into your home and into your lives wherever you are. I hope that this has been a moment of inspiration, encouragement, or even a challenge. If you are not a part of the Aruka Worship Center, um, you can still hear and learn more about this word. Amen. You can contact me um, with the information that you will get at the end of the broadcast. Uh, or you can visit me at the Aruka Worship Center, Lower Railway Road in Aruka. I love you with the love of the Lord. Blessings to you. Peace. Listen, God loves you. Amen, amen, amen. And he doesn't want you to perish. My God, hallelujah. Blessings, peace. Good night.